Hey everybody, this is Devin Olson, and today we're going to talk about character textures, or how to optimize your character textures. So, in the scene right now, we have a character, and if I press M on my keyboard here in 3D Studio Max, we'll bring up the material editor. And right now we have a submaterial with two materials on it, one for this character's body and one for his head. Both these textures are 2048 by 2048, and I feel I could probably optimize that to utilize a single texture and maybe make that a 4096 by 4096 and allow us some room for our game engine to degrade that texture down for different systems or quality settings. So to begin, what we want to do is, with our character selected, go over to the modifier list here, and we're going to go down to the edit poly modifier in the stack and we're going to add an unwrap modifier just above that. Perfect. We can go ahead and right click and say hide unselected to hide the bipedal system. And we'll go ahead and select the unwrap modifier. Down in here, the first thing we'll do is we'll change this to channel 2. And it's going to prompt us for a dialog to make some decisions here. So what it's asking us to do is, would we like to move the current set of UVs up to channel 2 or abandon and start a new set of UVs on channel 2? In this instance, we would like to move the existing channel, or basically copy what's in channel 1, over to channel 2. Okay, so any edits we make uh, to this UV set on this model right now is only going to be done on channel 2 while preserving channel 1 exactly the way it is. So, we can now come up top here, and let's just turn on polygon mode, and that will allow us to select different polygons. And then also, over here, uh, select by element, so we can start selecting whole sections of the character. And that's going to become useful here in just a second. So with those two options on, scroll down a little bit and we'll say Open UV Editor, and that's in the Edit UVs rollout. All right, we'll go ahead and maximize this window. So what we're looking at here is a view of all the different pieces of the character in a single UV viewport. Now what we'll first do is, coming back over here, let's use this by material ID to say Select Material IDs 1, and then in this window, we'll go ahead and move those UVs over to the side. And we'll also go to UV set 2, which is materials 2. We'll just move those to the side. Um, if your character happens to have a lot of textures, you'll probably go through maybe three or four of these and just move them out of the way of this palette, basically. Just gets things nice and divided for our next step. All right, so with that done, we'll go ahead and maximize this window. And let's start talking about some of these different pieces. So if we come in here, we still have the select by polygon mode on. But in this view, we don't have by element yet. So we can do that by turning this guy on right here, select by element. And so if we select um, different pieces, it will select the whole area. OK, uh, looking at this hand, uh, this is the hand of the character. If we were to select one of these pieces and move it around, you'll see that it's sitting on top of another piece. A lot of times, characters will come in pieces that are just one big piece. Um, but sometimes it requires the artist to stack some of the UVs to save real estate. And real estate is king in the UV world, right? So the more real estate you have, the more pixels you can put on a surface and get that much more detail out of it. It's pretty important to utilize the real estate conservatively and wisely. So this is why you'll see some things stacked up. And that poses a little bit of a problem for us because what we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't unstack anything when we relay this out. So what I like to do is come in here and select all these different pieces one by one and find out, yes, indeed, there is a second layer underneath it in which I will drag and select both pieces. And down here, uh, we have a grouping tool. So we can now click this first icon to group our selection. And then we just right click and say hide. OK, and we'll just keep doing that process until we have identified all of the ones that need to be grouped and the ones that don't. Now, it's important to do these one at a time and not as just one big group um, because we're going to have 3 Studio Max lay these pieces out for us in a single UV layout with nothing overlapping except for what we've grouped. And the hiding just uh, simply helps me visually see everything that I've already done instead of questioning whether or not that's been tested or not. So it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it goes fairly quick, and the results are worth it. Sometimes you can just 
make a few big selections like this and know that those all just need to be hidden. Sometimes you'll have a, a loose UV just hanging out over there. Um, I think the artist was just trying to utilize some of that same coloring over there. So that's fine. Doesn't need to be grouped with anything. Now if you ever make a selection and you're unsure if you've actually grouped it or not, say you walked away for five minutes and came back and you can't remember if you've grouped it, you don't want to double group it. Um, I mean, there's no problem in double grouping it, you just don't want to do it. Um, you can make a single selection again, see there's something underneath there, and then just come over here and the very last thing is select group. And if you click that and both of them are moving, then yeah, you know you've grouped it already. Okay, so once you have everything hidden, you can right click and unhide it all. And what we're going to do now is select everything, and right above the element properties or the grouping tools that we were just using is the arrange elements tool. What I like to do is turn rotate on, turn padding down to 0 0.005, and I'll click this first button, which will pack all of our elements together, and then the second button will basically pack it within our UV set here. All right, so again, what we've just done is that we've grouped all the pieces that need to still sit on top of each other, and then we went ahead and repackaged uh, all of the Channel 2's UVs into a nice, uniform, no overlaying set. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to use this UV set to render out a new 4096 by 4096 texture for this character. And then we'll make this Channel 2 UV set the permanent Channel 1 UV set to use with that same texture. So we'll go ahead and hit zero on our keyboard, and this will bring up the Render to Texture dialog. What we'll first do is we'll come down here and make sure that we have the body of the character as the object that we're going to render out. We're going to use, under the mapping coordinate, the existing channel, and we're going to change that to channel 2. And then down here we're going to add a diffuse map, add a specular map, and add a normal map. Now we're going to specify the different dimensions for all three of those maps. And then finally we're going to specify where we would like to save the diffuse, specular, and normal. Underneath the Save As Type you can choose various different formats, uh, JPEG, PNG, TARG. Um, we'll just go ahead and choose JPEG for right now. You can see I have some existing maps here. I'll just go ahead and overwrite those. Yes. You can choose the quality settings for the JPEG. Go ahead and maximize it. And we'll do that same process for the specular. and our normal. So now let's talk about what these different materials are targeting as they're being rendered out. So if we were to hit the material editor by hitting M on our keyboard, and we bring up the material, which is again a multi-sub object that has two materials being used, one body, one head. Let's just open up the body. So the body is compromised of a diffuse, texture. Actually, we'll scroll down a little bit. It's a little bit easier to see in the full maps roll out. So we have a diffuse texture, we have a specular, and we have a bump. And the bump is just using a normal map material and just pointing to a normal texture. So we have three different material sources that we can render out our new texture using Channel 2's UVs, which is diffuse, specular, and bump. So it's important that you actually have those source materials in the original materials that are on the character if you're going to be rendering out new textures. Okay, coming down here into the automatic mapping rollout, let's just go ahead and uncheck these. I don't know if that necessarily makes a difference. It just keeps peace at mind for me knowing that none of these options are going to be on. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is, uh, with all those settings changed, just turn padding to zero on that because we're going to use the padding from our UV channel number two. So we hit render. And again, it's taking our channel 2 UVs and the textures that are originally on the character, and it's rendering out a new set of diffuse, normal, and specular map under a 4096 layout. Now, this view it just gave us shows some shadowing in there that we probably wouldn't want to keep in production. Um, don't mind that. This isn't a true representation of what was just rendered out. So if we were to navigate to the textures now, we can see that there's no shadowing that's been baked into that diffuse, normal, or specular. Okay, so we'll go back to Max. We're going to start a new material over here. 
we're going to point to the new diffuse map that was just rendered out. We're going to make it a bitmap, uh, point to the new diffuse that was rendered, go back up. Uh, make sure you turn on show shaded material in viewport, otherwise when we go to use it, you won't see it. Just name this material diffuse. It's not important, you can name it whatever you want. Um, populate the spec level with a bitmap as well and point to our new spec map that was rendered out. Go back up a layer, and then down in maps, go to bump. And we're not gonna use a bitmap here, we're gonna use a normal bump. And then in this rollout, underneath the normal, not the additional bump field, we're gonna populate a bitmap. And we will populate the normal map that was rendered out. Okay, last thing, we could probably bump up, <laughs> pardon the pun, debump to maybe 75. Okay, let's close some of these windows so we don't need them anymore. We're going to take this material and we're going to drag it on our character. Alright, so at this point the UVs look pretty messed up. And that's because we need to go back into our UV unwrap modifier and we need to change its channel to 1. We'll be prompted for the dialog for moving the edits that were done on UV channel 2 to UV1, and we want to say move, not abandon. And there we have it. Last thing, let's just go ahead and right click on that modifier and say collapse 2. Yes. And there we have it. Um, we're now using just a single texture that was rendered out from the procedurally laid out UVs that were done on channel 2, but were rendered through the textures that were on channel 1. So this uh, really optimizes our character to not having a bunch of overhead and useless materials that are causing a bunch of draw calls and VRAM usage. Uh, and if you have a character that is, you know, of course, made up of more than just two materials, I highly suggest doing this. You could even go through and just start combining groups of textures. Let's say if you have a bunch of textures on a single character, you go through and start rendering out groups of different textures instead of having a bunch of individual textures. Or do what I did and just sum it up all into one texture. Of course, the amount of textures that you have and the available real estate that you are playing with plays a factor into the overall quality that's going to be rendered out. So just give it a shot, see what it looks like under one whole texture, and if it doesn't look to be up to the quality that you're wanting, maybe break it up into two textures, but you're no longer limited to having to deal with a multitude of different textures over a single character now. Uh, speaking of quality, let's compare this now collapsed character against our existing character with two materials by hopping over to Unity 3D. Okay, and here we are in Unity. On the left, we have the original character that has two materials, one for head, one for body. And on the right, we have our new combined material. And we can see there's a little bit of a loss in what looks to be like the normals. Um, so if we take a look at the guy on the left, this is the original two material. Um, we can see we get a little bit more detail. I've scaled these up by a factor of five so we can get in really close and look at some of these textures here. And I've also increased the normals to be 1.5 from the normal, I think, 0.5 so that they really stand out. So this is the original, and then here's our new. So we're not looking at much of a quality difference. Um, if we get really close to the, like his bandana on, this is the new. And then look at the bandana over on the original. It looks really close to the same. Uh, in fact, I would say it is the same. Um, now again, the more materials that your original, this guy over here, has that you want to combine into a single material over here, um, the more quality you're going to lose because you're losing more real estate to fit that many more pixels in a given element piece. So again, if you prefer, let's say the original over here has, you know, let's say eight materials, you could consider combining that into maybe just two materials with the uh, collapse method I just showed. And then your final result will have the target resolution that you're looking for, but won't have the overhead of having eight materials. Alright, so I hope this has been helpful for some people out there. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And I know this is pretty fast, guys, so if you have any questions, leave comments down below, and I'll be sure to help you out as soon as I can.